Hello, we will be taking a look at the animal immune system. The immune system is the toolkit of defenses that an animal has to fight off pathogens, such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi, among others. The immune system can be divided into two main parts, the innate immune system, which is present in all animals, and the adaptive immune system, which is only present in vertebrates. Let's start by exploring the innate immune system. Most animals have a protective exterior that serves as the first line of defense against pathogens. Humans have a protective layer of dead cells and keratin, while insects have an outer layer called cuticle. Pathogens will sometimes be able to bypass the protective outer layer and enter the body. This will elicit an immune response from white blood cells in the body, also known as leukocytes. Leukocytes are coated with special receptor proteins called toll-like receptors, or TLRs. These TLRs can bind to antigens, which are molecules not normally found in the host that are associated with pathogens. When leukocytes bind to an antigen, it will trigger a response signal according to the type of antigen found. Let's take a look at the inflammatory response in humans. This person has scraped their knee, which has allowed pathogens to bypass their first line of defense. Platelets will arrive at the site of the injury and begin releasing proteins that will clot the blood. Macrophages and wounded tissues will begin releasing chemokines that will signal other leukocytes to come to the wound. Leukocytes called mast cells secrete histamine which causes nearby blood vessels to dilate and increase in permeability. Neutrophils, another leukocyte, follow the chemokine signal and pass through the permeable blood vessels. The neutrophils attack pathogens through phagocytosis. Various other leukocytes reach the wound through the blood vessels and become macrophages. They then help remove remaining pathogens through phagocytosis. Additionally, they release cytokines that can stimulate tissue repair. Our friend's first line of defense is fine once again. Next, we will take a look at the adaptive immune system. The immune cells that are part of the adaptive immune system are called lymphocytes. The two main types of lymphocytes are T cells and B cells. Both cells are produced in bone marrow, but T cells are matured in the thymus, while B cells are matured in bone marrow. While inactive, lymphocytes are circulated through lymph nodes, blood, and the spleen. Lymphocytes have antigen receptors that can identify and bind to specific antigens. B cells also produce free-floating receptors called antibodies. These receptors play a critical role in the specificity of the adaptive immune system. Take another look at our friend with the scraped knee, but this time examining the adaptive immune system. Lymphocytes called dendritic cells will engulf antigens through phagocytosis. They will process the antigens in proteins called major histocompatibility proteins, and the antigens are then delivered to T cells, and the T cells are activated. T cells are matured in the thymus and cloned with receptors specific to the antigens brought by the dendritic cells. Some T cells, called killer T cells, will start to kill infected host cells. Other T cells, called helper T cells, will activate B cells. The activated B cell will then replicate and release antibodies specific to antigens from the pathogen. Antibodies will bind to the antigens located on the pathogens. The antibodies on the pathogens will make them easy targets for phagocytes and proteins, will prevent the pathogen from entering host cells, and clump pathogens together. In addition to fighting off pathogens, B cells and T cells will produce memory cells. If the same antigen is in the body again in the future, memory cells will be able to quickly identify it and initiate immune response. This allows for a much faster response to invading pathogens. Memory cells can last for years in the body. Vaccines contain dead or non-pathogenic strains of a particular bacteria or virus, which allows our bodies to prepare memory cells. Thank you for listening, and I hope you've learned something about the immune system.